I'm sick of words. I was like a real, the first music I ever liked in middle school was like straight up cock rock music, like Poison and Warrant and Skid Row and Guns N' Roses. Well, Guns N' Roses were a little bit outside that, I guess, but um, I was like full on into all of that, like Sunset Strip dudes with teased hair. I thought that was very cool. And then I was one of those stereotypical seventh graders that when Nevermind came out, it was like, oh, fuck that and kind of stopped listening to that music entirely, very quickly. Besides Guns N' Roses, whose teeth were in deeper, it took me another two years to grow out of that. I don't love Axl Rose. I don't know Axl Rose, but I suspect I wouldn't like him very much now as a human being. But that's totally not fair, Axl, if, if we ever meet. You know, I, maybe you're great, but you, you seem troubled. And uh, I don't know. I don't know if I'd like you or not. Honestly, but when I was 10, you were the coolest. So thanks for that. Party music is like, everyone needs party music. It's like, it's, sometimes you just wanna have something on when you're like cooking and not everything needs to be like a weighty philosophical treatise on, you know, existence in the modern age or whatever. Like sometimes you just wanna like, and like Wrecking Ball is a great song. That's not party music, but that's pop. There's a lot of great pop music that is not like, necessarily deep, but I think that if it was all like really, if everything was like the stuff I like, I think the world would be a lot more boring. <laughs> so, you know, and I think for that stuff, if everything was just like mindless club music, those diamonds in the rough that you find that make you reflect and feel something more deeply, you, you know, those wouldn't be there. So I think one kind of needs the other. I tend towards really, music that makes me think, but I also like songs. I want something that's like well-performed and has and cleverly written musically as well. And like the people can play and sing. And uh, you know, if it's just like a poet that there's no music to, I'm not super interested in that. I write songs about my experience of being a person. And sometimes that experience is being confused, frustrated, uh, curious about not just why things go on in like in one-on-one -on -one relationships or your inner relationship, but why things go on on a larger kind of social scale. And so for me, the songs that get written about like politics or, or more accurately, I guess, social issues are written from the same place as like a song about love or lost love or drugs or no drugs or... Uh, you know, whatever, story songs, or it's just, just that's the thing that was motivating me to write something that day. But I also don't think they don't mix, you know, and I think there are people who have pretty hard lines about that. And I know there's people who like, I've been told that by people that they don't like my stuff because of the 10 to 15 songs out of 130 that deal explicitly with some kind of social issue. And that's okay, that's fine with me, because then, you know, that's, if you're not, if that's not your thing and it's that upsetting to you, then you probably shouldn't, you should also probably like talk to somebody. But like, but if that's the case, then, then, you know, you don't, there's other people who won't, who won't ever sing about that stuff and you can completely enjoy their body of work. I never had a career goal in the sense that I was like, I'm going to get rich and I'm going to be famous and I'm going to be on the cover of magazines and I'm going to, like, I, I always had like a, it's, I'm, I'm just realizing how skewed my ideas were about this stuff. Like in my head, the things I've always really loved, even if they were enormously popular, like Bob Dylan or Nirvana, in my head, they're like, they're, it's like mine. So I think of them as like bands that play like little clubs. And then I'm like, oh no, they sold like 50 million <laughs> records and they were like enormously popular. So I always just sort of wanted to like, make stuff I liked, but also if I got to make a living at it, that would be great. And if I got to keep making more of it and make a better living at it, which has slowly kind of, it's never gone like this in my career, but it's always gone like that. You know, I think like you don't end up being on the cover of magazines or being like the biggest, hippest thing in the room, but you get to keep having a career. And that isn't something that everybody gets to have. So I think my goals now are just like, 
it's like I run a small business that happens to be like an art that I would be doing whether no one was paying attention to it or not. I mean, I've been writing songs since I was like in sixth grade. No one was paying me to do it for a very long time, actually, and they still don't pay me great to do it now, but I get to make a living at it. And I think that's like, to me, it's not Nirvana, Miley Cyrus, pop level successful, but it's, it's pretty cool. It's better than any other job I ever had for the last you know, 20 years I've been working. This is probably not the best approach, but I, I've been just trying to kind of like build my own micro music industry totally outside of it. And if I ever get money from things like Spotify or that's like a bonus, but I don't count on it. I don't, I guess I think the music industry in a mainstream sense is so irrevocably fucked at this point that trusting it to heal itself and then lift all boats with it, including mine, doesn't seem like an especially smart plan. So I'm just trying to like figure out how to go directly to the people that like my music and, and keep trying to grow that out. But um, I guess if they figure out a way to monetize the advertising income, that's how everyone seems to make money in entertainment these days. So if they figure out a way to do that, um, I think it could be of, of value. But I know like, I. The, the most interesting things to me about the streaming services is that one, I never got asked to be on it. I just am on it. And I, everyone I've talked to has the same experience. So I'm kind of curious about that, how that just like happened. That it's now, it, you have to actually ask to not be on it, but otherwise you're just like sort of there. And I don't really understand the mechanics of that, like who sold them that. Um, Cause I didn't and my manager didn't. and. There's no label, so I don't know how it's all on there. Um, and that's not just my story, but like thousands of bands. So that's weird. And I also can tell you like, however many thousands of streams we get, I think I make like, you know, 50 bucks off it or something like that, a quarter. So I don't know if, if they figure it out, that would be great, but I'm just gonna kind of keep doing my own stuff and see what happens with that. I also think there's a whole thing with this generation of people that's really like kind of because everything's become so kind of digitized and social media has kind of become the prevalent way people interact with one another. I think there are people are looking for some kind of return to an authentic experience and vinyl crackles and sounds different every way it's pressed. And um, I think there's something about that that's appealing to people looking for that kind of thing. The art looks better, bigger. It's, it's frameable in a cool way. A CD kind of would look ridiculous, like framed on the wall, but vinyl looks like a piece of art. And, and, and I think the people that might gravitate towards like underground music, which is a place in my experience where vinyl was always prevalent. Like I grew up in a hardcore scene and a punk rock scene and vinyl was always there. Like I didn't know it went away because all the kids that I was in bands with like pressed their own seven inches and stuff. And that was part of it then too was like, it was like a punk rock thing to do. It was a way to say like, fuck you to more mainstream or accepted ways of making music. It's the same way cassettes are coming back now. As a person who grew up as that being the primary way I received music, cassettes suck. They don't sound great. They break easily. They get, they get eaten up. They're not especially cool packaging, but uh, that represents like a more authentic throwback experience to a kid who's like 17 now. And I think that's cool. Um, you know, I don't know. I think the vinyl thing's probably better than the cassette thing just in terms of what you get from it. But I'm also like 60 years old. Obviously being combined with the Manchester thing certainly doesn't hurt. They, are, they cast a much bigger net than I do. Um, as a band who actually had like, to my mind, a semi-successful three record run on a major record label, you know, that's like a bigger thing than someone who's like got a slingshot and is trying to like knock the wall down one pebble at a time. And, and I think the Bad Book stuff also, people seem to react to it because it's very loose and fun and we wear it lightly, which I think has informed both of us to go back to our primary projects and like ease up a little bit, not like be like so serious all the time, even if the songs are, like to perform them more lightly. Um, and I think the success of something like Forrest Whitaker has helped, like Bubblegum gets played on Alt Nation on Sirius all the time now. And that I don't think would have happened if Bad Books hadn't like opened that door, which is awesome. 
the way I measure my career is not like numerical, you know? It's, I think I'm trying to do something a little outside that. But if I were to measure it that way, there isn't a competition. Like Manchester's a much bigger band than me. And, uh, and that makes sense to me. That's good. And, and I've always, I loved watching that happen. The same way I love watching it happen with the front bottoms too, like watching that connection. Um, if there is any competition in terms of the songwriting, I think that's actually healthy. And it, we're trying to both, we know the other guy is good, so you don't want your half of the record to like be the shitty half. You're trying to like keep up with somebody you respect a lot, and I think that's that's good. I think it'll make bad books just keep getting better. I hope too, because you want to be you want to bring your A game to it. You don't want to bring like your cast off songs to it, and I think that's a good thing. <laughs>